Welcome back to another semi-educational video, this time discussing Occam's Razor. Succinctly put, Occam's Razor is a philosophical theory popularised by an English friar, William of Occam. He was named Occam for he originated from the town of Occam in Surrey, England, in the 13th and 14th centuries. Note well that Occam wasn't the first to come up with this theory, however, he used it the most frequently, documented it, and used it with such cutting efficiency that the name Occam's Razor stuck, and now we associate it with him and it bears his name. The theory itself goes thus, plurality should not be posited without necessity. This all sounds well and good, but what the hell does it actually mean? To better understand that, let's apply a 21st century filter to the words I've just said. When considering two theories, the simplest is to be preferred. We'll now go into two examples of the theory in action, but first we must note that Occam's razor is not applicable in all situations. It does have its flaws, but it serves as a good general guide for trimming the fat. First, if I may indulge, we will cut back to this lady before she was saying, what the hell does that mean? But now, why the hell aren't you subscribed to this channel? And please, before you leave this video, do subscribe. It really helps us out. So let us discuss example one, putting Occam's razor to good use. If we take two opposing theories on the creation of the universe, one which Occam himself would have no doubt discussed as a Christian thinker, uh, rather probably uh, radical Christian thinker, we have two options, the Lord God Almighty and Big Bang Theory. With the Lord God Almighty, you have one option, an all-powerful deity created the universe, full stop. With Big Bang Theory, we have to consider that the event was serendipitous, the right particles were in the right conditions in the right place at the right time, all of which went through various stages of change, different species evolved from these atoms and particles, and no knowledge as to what came before, or at least no concrete evidence, one could argue. Using Occam's razor, which Occam no doubt would have done, the theory favours the Lord God Almighty, as only one factor has to be considered rather than many. I assume you see the flaw now. Let's take another example from a situation you may be able to relate to easier, and that is one from a business setting. So in this situation, the same staff member calls in sick every Sunday morning. Always it's a similar excuse, migraine, vomiting, etc. Nothing serious, just enough to knock them out for the day's work until Monday most of the time. Option one, this employee is taking liberties and is calling in sick to have a jolly old time at the weekend rather than turning in for work more than likely after drinking too much on a Friday and or a Saturday night. Option two, this person has a severe immune deficiency which is very specific in terms of its regularity and onset and currently medical science cannot offer any remedy to stop the symptoms occurring at the weekends. Rather than boiling this down to too simple a situation however, let's throw in an option three. Option three is that something in the person's work life or home life or both is causing stress and or anxiety making them dodge work at, on a particular day or particular time and perhaps this is an overbearing manager, harsh workload or unrealistic targets or any number of those things. Now applying Occam's razor we can immediately eradicate option two. It's something we would probably already know about, it's just the most unlikely of the three. Next to go would be option three, as there are more contri contributing factors. Remember, of two competing theories, the simplest is to be preferred. However, in the real world, as a manager or a friend or any situation where you'd be thinking along these lines, option three should still be explored in the interest of fairness and in that person's best interest. Finally, this last section not only gives you a handy recap of Occam's razor, I know, generous to a fault, but it also is inviting you to like, to subscribe, comment, and if you have any energy after all that liking and subscribing and commenting and learning, please do share it with someone who you think will find this interesting or useful. It really helps us out to grow as a channel and helps with the YouTube algorithm. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.